Um, All right, uh, now let's start working on example two and three in our um, session of uh, engineering accounting. Please go to our shared lab notes and the section of the engineering accounting and work on the examples of the present value and future value. If last time you already started example two, uh, you can um, work on example three. So by the end of our lab session, we should be clear how to calculate uh, or transform between any of annuity, present value, and future value. Let me know if you have any questions regarding our lab session uh, and uh, these examples. Yeah, Wait, no, no, no. Oh, 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 no.
Okay, you can watch it and then 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 So I think that's the one Or you could do, you could take it to the future, you could take it to the annual, and then buy like one. I think it, I like to take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
So we can just divide to the other side. So the reason is the things that we to the a lot Yeah. Oh, Amy, I definitely recommend looking for like a tattoo artist that has like good film picks because you don't want like someone who like tattoos you and like All right, which team has completed example three? Anyone? Oh, right. Oh, Okay, now let's take a look at both examples. The basic idea behind all our economic accounting knowledge was that the current value is um, the, the money now is going to be discounted in the future. So uh, if we need to find out uh, the transformation between present value and the future value, we should always see that the amount corresponding to a present value is smaller than the nominal amount uh, expressed in a future value uh, because we can uh, there's an interest. The reason behind this is when we don't account for any inflation, but only interest rate. If I have $100 at this moment without doing anything, in one year ahead of time, where uh, the value is going to increase by in, uh, by the interest uh, percent, because even if I uh, don't do anything additional, uh, the money that I hold now could be saved in a bank. Then uh, the bank will issue us interest. Then uh, ahead of uh, one year ahead, we will see that this total amount increases. So. If the interest rate is 5%, if I have $100 now, uh, and in one year, I will have 105, right? So what that means is uh, the present value of 100 is equivalent to a future value in one year of uh, 105. So using this idea, when we transform uh, a future value to present value, we need to divide by a larger amount than one. So it got shrank. And uh, uh, that's what we, we mean by discounting. And uh, the other way around uh, means that to find a future value equivalent for any present value, 
we need to multiply it by a factor that's greater than one. So we get a larger amount. Okay. In example two, we are given uh, about some known knowledge. First, we need to find uh, the interest rate. The interest rate in the example was given as a annual rate, but the payment was now monthly. That's why we need to find the monthly effective interest rate based on the annual nominal interest rate. So here we need to use the 4%, that's annual rate, and divided by 12, that's the number of months in a year, right? So with that, we can find uh, the effective monthly rate, that's about one third of a percent. Then with that, we need to find uh, what we need to calculate. So the question asks for the installment amount. This is how much needs to be paid per month. And this is exactly annuity. Although it's paid by month, but uh, the, uh, the concept is still called annuity. So if we need to calculate an annuity based on the values, we need to uh, figure out whether our known value is uh, in future value or present value. So in the question, we know that uh, out of the 100 total amount, 200 has been paid and there's 800 remaining at the time when the 200 was paid, right? So this means the $800 remainder is a present value. And what's going to happen afterwards is our monthly installments. So there will be 12 times of equal amount of payments. These would be annuity. So here we have a present value known, then we need to find the annuity. So, out of all the equations between annuity, future value, and present value, honestly, the, the, this one is the only one that we should depend on. Based on the summation formula for a uh, geometric progression, we can derive all the, uh, all the six, I guess, six formulas for uh, the relationship between a present value, future value, and annuity. So, I think using this formula uh, to derive the summation of a uh, geometric progression actually makes lots of things easier. So we don't get confused by uh, which of the formula we need to use. Let's see how we can use uh, this formula to derive what, what we need to uh, find, uh, what we need to find out. So here. First, we need to recognize that we have uh, this present value here. And uh, uh, if we were given future value, it'd be something else. But let's focus on the present value. We are given 800 that's worth at this moment. And we need to find the equivalent uh, annuity for the first month payment because it happens one month afterwards, right? The present value is smaller than that amount by a factor of the one plus this interest. This is the interest. That's one third of a percent because it's paid at the end of the, the month. So it's going to be discounted one time. For month two payment, it's two months ahead. So it's going to be discounted two times. That's why the annuity is going to be divided by uh, the interest rate plus one uh, raised by the power of two. So we do the same thing until the last term, that's the uh, final payment. And the final payment is 12 months ahead. That's why it's going to be divided by one plus interest rate raised to the power of 12. Okay. So now we already know this interest rate. We need to sub, uh, substitute the interest rates here. 
Then we use uh, this formula here. We need to find uh, the summation, the sum of all these uh, 12 terms, right? So here, the first uh, term in these 12 is just our discounted first month payment. Then this amount is going to be multiplied by one minus Q. Q here is one divided by, by one plus interest rate. And this is going to be uh, raised to the power of 12. That's what N is. N is the number of the terms. So uh, that's the formula we use to calculate the annuity. Then solve this equation, we can find what A equals. Any question for exam example two? And for the second part of uh, question two, we just change this amount to you know, 400. Then you can solve for A again. So due to this equation, that's uh, how we derive the relationship between present value and annuity. Yeah. And that's exactly what you see in your uh, slides of the lecture. Okay, now let's uh, focus on example three. All right. <laughs> In example three, there could be uh, three different methods to calculate. What we need to do here is to compare uh, in the same term. So uh, we are given two options. And option one seems to be a future value, right? At the end of year 10, we are paid 1 million. And uh, option two is an annuity. So each year and we receive 75,000. And we need to compare them by transforming one of them to the other or some equivalent amount. So if we translate the future value to annuity, we need to use the relationship between future value and annuity. And this is now, uh, this could be understood much easier way uh, by establishing, uh, you know, maybe a diagram. So this is year one, this is year 10, annuity is paid at the end of each year, right? And we need to find the, the future value. So the first payment is nine years before the future value is calculated. And the last one is zero year before the future value. So to find the future value of it, we would multiply the first year amount by nine times of the interest rate plus one. And uh, for the second year, it's eight times one plus i raised by the power of, of eight. So we sum all the 10 terms. The last term is this one, which is exactly a. So the last year annuity is not going to be paid for any interest because it happens right at the time of the future value is assessed. So this is how we can find the relationship between annuity and future value. So out of option two, we find that annuity is 75,000, right? And uh, this interest rate is 5% per year. And we can find the future value. Then we compare whether this future value is greater than, equal to, or smaller than uh, the given 1 million. And if, if it's greater, then of course, the option two uh, has a better value. So we take option two, otherwise vice versa. Okay, any question regarding example three? All right, so as you can see, without using any of the more uh, specific formula out of the geometric 
uh, the progression summation formula, we can derive everything. And I think formulating the thing using such equations is much easier because if we, uh, this help us to understand what's going on in each of the payment and whether we need to calculate future value or a present value example too. And using the summation function, we can easily calculate what's uh, unknown in this equation. All right, that sums our uh, engineering accounting session. And please return your exam book and the worksheet this time.